Well, welcome to another video. This one starts out on the messy side of the house and with an engine. This engine uh, belonged to my late brother who um, passed away at his own hand about 10 years ago through some pretty unfortunate circumstances, some of which will be uh, discussed in the link to a documentary in the description of this video. But uh, we're going to move on from that. His original design for this was to attach it to an alternator to make a generator of sorts. Um, I have pretty much the same idea, except I'm adding a 24 volt alternator, which should be arriving tomorrow sometime. I have a few bits and pieces. Uh, one of the original problems they had with this is it ran really lean and was hard to start. And uh, they tried for quite a while, my brother and my father, to get this running. It took me about an hour and I ended up actually putting a suction line on the fuel line. And sucking some junk out of the fuel. Now it runs perfectly. Aside from a crook seal on the fuel bowl, which um, we can replace pretty easily. In any case, uh, I need to start preparing now to uh, try and mount this on something. Now I looked into a bunch of different options on how to make a frame for this. I decided this was going to be the easiest and cheapest way. And of course comes some assembly required. So uh, I think I might drag this in where it's not 38 degrees Celsius. And assemble it in the cool. Okay we have assembled the bottom section and it's got wheels on it that move around. I'm not sure if you can see it does wriggle a little bit. We might put a piece of timber in the bottom of that. Now dimension wise this is probably just gonna fit just nicely and maybe if I pull the pull start off it might make a bit more room but I think <laughs> we're not gonna have a lot of room for much else. Now we're at the back of the six wheel drive. Things are a little messy in here so don't mind the chaos. All right, this will fit in here nicely. Let's change the feet here. So when we have when we have this uh, parked in here, it will fit between these two areas. I won't knock stuff off there. It'll come up to about this height, which will be nice. Now, there's a factor I didn't think to measure here, is the height of the whole thing. So if we look at this here, this is where the top of that top shelf will be, and it's going to clear it just nicely. I'll have to cut a hole for the uh, fuel filler in there, but that will be okay, and I can put a little magnetic cap or something on there. Okay, so we have a test fit, and it's going to go in very nicely, and a uh, comfortable bit of clearance for the belt. Alright, we also have the supplied handle, which we can attach on the end here, and that'll work really well. Alright, so I was just having my morning cup of tea, and this showed up. This is a brand spanking new uh, 24 volt alternator as used in the six wheel drive Parentes. This is the small version. I have the giant 100 amp one. It's a 55 amp. This is a Bosch. Um, absolutely spanking new. In fact, the box, I had to cut the original factory sticker off it. Thank you very much to Anthony for this one. We've got a nicely fitted piece of timber here with a little gap to make it easy to get in. Now we need to do a couple of other things like uh, cut the corners out to avoid the bolt holes. We'll do that shortly and then we'll figure out where our engine mount goes. Alright, so I've got things largely lined up. I used my old board as a uh, drilling guide. And I dropped bolts through to make sure things didn't get out of step. We can chuck this out of the way now. I threw some packers in around the sides. I'll pull them out afterwards. I can bolt straight through now with these long bolts and I may put this rubber liner underneath just to help with sound deadening. Not sure if it'll work or not, but we'll try it. All right, we're bolted down nice and firmly, although I will do the bolts up a little bit tighter, but we're in and I went underneath and I put washers and bolts on the bottom. I stuck the bolts through the top and then sat it on top of the bolts because uh, I couldn't get them through the bottom of the engine but it works go here. All right, let's try uh, two birds one stone I wonder if a 7 amp hour well this is a 9 amp hour <coughs> I wonder if this will start it
One hour later. Alright, so I think it was a simple fix. I think it was just out of fuel. And uh, I thought the fuel tank sounded a bit empty. I might have been right. Oh, too quick on the choke. Let's try again. Looks like I get a bit more mucking around. I think the battery vibrating is what's causing our problems. All right, a bit of mucking around, but we got it running smoothly. So uh, that's it idle. It'll run all right. Things are vibrating a bit, but that'll change when we've got the lid on. Under load, it is walking a bit. I may need to do something about that. But for now, I'm pretty happy. All right, well, things are working, but we've still got the problem with this leaking. Looks like we've got another fuel leak up there somewhere as well. I'm not sure where that's coming out. Dripping down this side of the carby. That's unusual. So I turned the fuel tap off for now. The fuel bowl should empty out. I've stuck this little tray in here to catch the drips. Um, we'll see how we go. All right, it's now officially 40 out here and even staying on the messy side of the house isn't saving me from the heat. I absolutely have to go in and get cool. Tomorrow is my monthly infusion, which is a treatment for multiple sclerosis. Um, and I am especially heat affected at the moment. So I'm going to call this quits for a couple of days and I'll come back to it afterwards. But we've certainly made progress. The very next evening. Right, so I'm back from oncology and I've had three needles because they couldn't get it in. Then some unobtainium. 24 volt, 3 watt globes. A uh, wedge globe holder, which is about the only one I could find. And an A section belt. <clears throat> which I'm pretty sure should fit this pulley nicely all right and while I'm sitting here we just ticked over to 40 though that could be because the Sun is now on this side of the building now also arrived is an assortment of uh, various fibro washers in different thicknesses and diameters hopefully one of these will fit the fuel bowl for my brother's old engine all right so I'm inside experimenting I found I can shove this on the back of this light fitting and that might work but uh, what I extracted out of the back of it was an incandescent globe that's 12 volts I may be able to attach one of my spares to this and shove it in here well, in addition I think my temperature sensor might be in full sun all right so I came up with a solution um, now the uh, the legs on these globes don't like the solder so I took a piece of um, bit of steel wire here made a little lap and sold it on it doesn't look pretty at all um, but it is on firmly uh, if I disassemble this arrangement I think it should fit I probably should have tested this <laughs> it stops just on the end of there so it turns out the solution was just give it a twist fits in there nicely we have our globe we've got our switch to uh, pretend to be our ignition switch so I think we're cooking with gas all right, so this morning it's a much more comfortable 19 degrees and I've got the alternator mounted and I've got uh, this little setup here for belt tension, but it's not quite long enough. Okay, we've had some other stuff arrive. We had some terminals, a uh, bigger turnbuckle and uh, thanks to the electronic barn, the guys there made up a custom lead for me. All right, we've got pretty much everything set up. We've got our warning light, we've got our switch here, which probably needs some insulation tape for the time being. Got our wire that runs off out to the backyard and our friendly magpie lark come to help. Our battery is stuck down, alternator's in, the belt tension's right, everything's bolted down. Fuel bowl still leaks even though I've put a new seal on it. It's going to be bigger problems but for now it will run to testings. And uh, magpie lark, I've got to find a name for him one day. He reckons he's going to get a free feed but jokes on him, I'm busy. All right, it's test run time and we're gonna have to deal with the wind. Can't help it on this side of the house. We're gonna plug into my 24 volt auxiliary Anderson under here and uh, fire things up and see if it works. All right, let's see if we get fireworks. No fireworks? That's good. All right, so exciter is de-energized. I've taped these up, turned fuel bowl on, which still leaks for some mysterious reason. I need to figure out why, and I don't think it's leaking out the fuel bowl, it's coming somewhere else. Okay, that seems to be good. Choke on, let's start her up. 
Oh, we're coughing fuel everywhere. Ah, I don't know what's going on here. A few moments later. Okay, we're running. We'll bring her off the throttle. And now let's energize this. bit hard to see here but we'll come up to 28 volts it was only 27 to start with but that's good all right let's add some load turn the master interior on and we'll turn our fridge on we'll add a little bit of load on the things there is one way we can increase the load Okay, I had to shut things down. There's nuts rattling loose. Okay, so now comes the difficult bit. I want to put the top on, but I will need to refuel it. So I need to cut a hole in this. However, engine is a little skew if because of the way I mounted it. Hence the alternator is a bit skew if to match the belt alignment. I think how I'm going to figure this out, so I'm going to take a bit of spray paint, spray a brief area under here, drop the top on with this little blob of blue tack here. And wherever it leaves a mark, that'll be our center point for our lid. Okay, Blue Tech make contact, grabbed a bit of paint. There's our little mark in the paint. Now we drill a pilot hole. Okay, well I've disconnected the solar, or at least turned off the isolator to the solar panels. We're running purely on generator now. Alright, we have the fridge running. We're about to add a bigger load. We're about to add 14 amps. See how she runs now. Right, so I'm hiding out in the back. I've got 14 amps running on that. No solar. And now I've just put the air conditioner into boost mode, uh, which should add about another 30 amps to it. Okay, so I've got the air conditioner running. I've turned off the boiling vessel. So I've removed about 14 amps. The air conditioner pulls around about 30 to 35 amps. Uh, and now our battery system says we're roughly even. It's starting to climb in voltage slightly which this is the whole thing I needed that generator to do, is keep up with the air conditioner. All right, so the financial manager just dropped off a hole source set and a paint marker. And the apprentice has come home with shopping. Okay, I have waited about 10 years to see this project uh, finished. This project will never be fully finished as all these product, projects are. But uh, yes, ever since my brother passed away, I've been waiting to see this project at least in a functional state. I finally got there today. There is a leaky fuel bowl, we'll work on that later. I'll put some sides on and vents and make the control panel later, but I'm calling this finished. Um, we will do subsequent videos on this shorter and uh, less detailed later, but I really wanted to get this out. Let's give it a test run with a top on. Time to put this one to bed, put it away somewhere, and we'll come back to another video. I hope you found this one entertaining. YouTube seems to be pushing my stuff a bit more lately, just like this generator, and a lot more of you have been seeing this video, so I hope you like it.